there's been an interesting development between inertia and biscuits. So that's something we've got to deal with right now. Plus, biscuits needs to start learning how to pay attention to me when we walk and when we start putting all of this together in the actual real world and not just our living room. Subscribe and click the bell. When Biscuits first came to our house, she was a little bit more hesitant than not about interacting with Inertia, and Inertia has gone out of her way to make Biscuits more comfortable with playing. But perhaps Inertia's strategy has backfired because now Biscuits is getting maybe a little too confident around Inertia. <gasps> One way that I like to temper this behavior, rather than relying on inertia to take care of everything, is to make sure that I'm doing my part to give Biscuits the outlet she needs to run and bite and play. Look at the different textures here. Crinkle, squeak, I mean, this is the dog toy perfected. BarkBox and Super Chewer Box are incredible monthly subscription boxes. They're magic mushrooms. They are, oh, so you can, pull them apart. They really are magic mushrooms. All right, so she clearly likes the Bark Box. What about Super Chewer? Super Chewer's for those dogs who are real hard on toys. And this comes off and there's a whole new toy. Before, after. Super Chewer's for any size dog. And I know in Biscuit's case, she's definitely interested in different textures. So this is a harder one. She might be a Super Chewer dog after all. With both boxes, you get two bags of awesome treats. Bark has an insane deal right now. They're going to give you a free memory foam dog bed when you sign up for a multi-month subscription of Bark Box or Super Chewer Box or both. These beds are really high quality. They get great reviews. And I honestly can't believe they're giving this away for free. I'm gonna have a special link in the description. This is first class, right? I mean, this is good, good play behavior. <laughs> love how Inertia's playing. I love how she's kind of putting Biscuits in her place a little bit. Sometimes Biscuits is a little too confident. Good for an older dog like Inertia to say, hey, chill a little bit. Very measured though. This is all in good fun but there are times when Biscuit's energy Inertia is a little too much even really for well Inertia. Too. And you can see that Inertia's communication becomes a little bit more serious, for, I mean... but she is still being extremely gentle here. An appropriate correction from an adult dog is brief, pointed, and with no attempt to harm. It's just about intervening and communicating. There should be no obvious intent to escalate the altercation as far as the adult dog is concerned. In other words, this isn't exactly fight or flight since it doesn't seem to come from a place of fear or anger. This falls more under dog-to-dog -dog communication than it does a disproportionate fear response. And not all dogs do this well. A lot of this has to do with their personality, their genetics, and their socialization early in life. Inertia has been on both sides of this equation. When she was a puppy, our senior dog, Indiana, was very good about showing Inertia the limits of what was acceptable and what wasn't. And now Inertia is passing that knowledge on to Biscuits. We always make sure that both Inertia and Biscuits have a place that they can go if they need to take a break. Inertia knows she can jump onto the couch to seek refuge, unless Biscuits manages to hang onto her neck and get dragged up there with her. What? Oh my God. How'd that happen? Biscuits used her. Did she just drag, did she get pulled up there? Yes, oh no. No way. Biscuits, that's where Inertia goes to take a break. Biscuits, I'm sorry, but I have to remove you from Inertia's take a break spot. Okay, oh my gosh, really? Yeah, you tell her. And what we just saw was a great measured correction by inertia. And that's exactly what I like to see in an older dog who's interacting with a puppy. In terms of inertia, kind of giving Biscuits that correction, saying, hey, a little too rough, don't bite my tail, but not overreacting, because Biscuits was clearly going a bit far there. Hey, girl. But it's wonderful to see Inertia feel comfortable enough to interact with her that way to provide the appropriate level of correction. I mean, there's kind of this thought out there that most dogs are quite forceful when they're trying to correct a puppy. And while you saw Inertia be a little physical, she wasn't over the top. She was very measured. I know a lot of people are under the impression that, oh, dogs use force to communicate with each other. Therefore, we should do it on them as well, because that's what they understand intuitively. That doesn't appear to really be true. I mean, if you ask any good breeder out there of dogs, they're not going to continue to breed a dog who is overly aggressive to puppies or other dogs. Dogs are domestic animals before anything else. 
they are selectively bred to listen to and take direction from people. So if you're new to teaching your dog and you've heard this idea that dogs correct each other with their teeth and their physical and that's the language they understand, keep in mind that's a dramatic oversimplification. It looks like inertia has this perfectly under control. Now let's see if we can get Biscuits to act less like a little terror and more like a model canine citizen. I'm gonna try something a little ambitious today. I would love to start teaching her the concept of heel, staying by my side when we walk. And I thought it might be a good idea to introduce it inside here, where it's still a pretty easy environment for her. Let's see if I can get her to engage, okay, in a training session here. Here, yes. She gave me a glance, sit. All right, looks like she's in the mood yes. to do some training with me. That's a good sign. Since I'm using her meal today, that gives me permission to be extra liberal with her food rewards. Let's work on spin. Trust me, this is relevant to teaching her how to heal or how to stay by my side when we both move. Yes, good. She's following that lure really well. See that? No treat in my hand. Good, yes. She's so good at that spin that I think she's ready to learn how to spin into that heel position, yes, she's a natural at that. Look at that. By teaching Biscuits how to spin and use all four of her legs to position herself like this, that should set us up for rapid progress when we work on heel. Let me give you an idea of what we're working towards here. These are some examples of inertia using a modified version of spin to achieve her heel position. Once I have her established in front of me like this, I want to be able to get her over here by spinning into position. So I've got her in front of me, I'm gonna get her into a stand, trying to lure her right there, yes. I'm kind of cheating here because I'm trying to get her to back up. That's okay, yes. I mean, you can see how clunky and messy these things look to begin with. I'm just trying to get her comfortable with this movement because it's a nice way to get your dog to understand how to use their body better, which is good for future training. If they're really good at walking backwards and spinning, they're gonna be more agile, maybe less prone to injury if they know how to move their body very purposefully. See how she's starting to back up there? That's pretty cool. And I'm constantly watching her for signs of frustration that she's becoming uninterested, but so far I'm not seeing many signs. It seems like she's willingly participating and enjoying the training session. Good? Yes! Here. And ideally I'd like her to hold that stand. Yes! When she does it. It's right there. Here. Yes. Yes. Oh, and okay, good girl. Very good. So she did great while we were on the ground together, but I want to evolve this into something that looks more like an actual heel. Yes. Here. Good. Yes. Oh, how about that? How about that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm also trying to be clear about letting her know when the exercise is over by releasing her with the okay. Here. Once they start getting the motion of spinning yes. around, if you call them to yes. you and then ask them to spin, it looks like, at least in her case, yes. that might be a better way to get yes. to heal a bit faster. It looks like she's in the habit of sitting for a treat, which for this training session is yes. something that I'd like to discourage. Here. While I have her attention, I'll treat her every second or so that she holds that heel position. Since that sit is now so yes. predictable, I can prevent it Here. by encouraging an incompatible behavior that is keeping the heel session moving Here. on. So now I'm going to increase the criteria basically. I'm only going to give her a treat while yes. she's standing. So when she sits, she'll not get a treat. Yes. Yes. See that very purposeful walk? As she gets the hang of this, the idea is to get her attention off of the treat here at some point. Yes. She gave me a very subtle glance up to my eyes there. Here. Yes. What was significant about that? I don't know if you caught that. There was no treat in my hand. So now we've got our yes responding to a hand signal. Yes, which we can over time evolve into something that's a little more practical. Having them being able yes. to respond to your finger or signal is very useful in many other aspects of dog training outside of tricks. Until just a few moments ago, Biscuits would sit when she heard the word yes and knew a treat was coming, but it looks like she's starting to understand that I'd prefer to have her standing for this exercise. Here, come on. She's brainstorming. See how she's biting herself? She could just have an itch or she could be getting a little frustrated. That might be my cue to give her a break or do something easier, but that was an incredible first session. So that is the state of Biscuit's puppy heel right now. 
Biscuits has been learning how to be brave in some pretty intense places for a little puppy, but today we're going to show her some things that would give any puppy pause. I think she's ready though. Time to find out. We brought Biscuits out to this park that I really like, but I'm kind of having second thoughts right now because I forget how loud the jets are that come overhead. But now that we're here, I'm like, I don't know. And Brie, you know, because sounds are so important for puppies to get used to, we should like deliberately introduce a lot of sounds. I know it might seem trivial, but dogs often develop disproportionate responses to natural and artificial sounds like electronic motors or vacuums or anything else. Training yourself to deliberately introduce things like sounds that you do have control over is likely to set your dog up for success. Let's try the sunroof. Good girl. Nice job, nice calm reaction, love it. This place is famous for very loud jets flying directly above, so I'll want to do my best to give her an introduction to this type of sound, plus have a way to reduce the volume of the jet should she get nervous. This is going to take some ingenuity on our part. But it's better to do gradual introductions to things where possible. So that's why we're sitting here waiting for a plane to fly over so she can hear it in this more controlled setting. You know, I just rolled down the window there. I can modify the volume of the jet flying above by changing the window. See that, isn't that neat? Yes. So that's something, and that in and of itself makes a sound, and she's reacting really well. You can see that she's noticing it. It looks like our first jet is going to fly over right now. Have you noticed that like when you're holding her and something does surprise her, you'll feel her heart rate really accelerate. It's a really good indicator as to her state of mind. Mm -hmm. you know? But here when she's sitting on me, you can still feel her muscles loose. Whereas if she woke up and was like, oh no, she would kind of tense up. Looks good, she reacted well. And I think we're good to move forward. I still want to verify though that she isn't startled of that jet when she's outside of the car. Little increase. It caught her attention more than it did in there, but still an acceptable reaction, it looks like. Yeah. Different perspective, seeing people walk, seeing dogs from above. I'm still noticing that initial shaking, which might indicate excitement. It might indicate a little nervousness, but it has been subsiding every time that we've gotten one of these training sessions underway, or in this case, it's gonna be a free walk. What do you think about that? See the water? There's dogs down there. You can see there's quite a bit of people here. She's so uncertain about all this. She's probably never seen a ground quite like this either. Let's see what she makes of the water over here. What do you think? Now these waves, certainly while small to us, must look much bigger. And she's just bolting towards the water right now. Most likely the first time she's ever seen waves. This is a weird planet, huh? Interesting, see that? Good girl. That's neat, huh? You can see this is probably the most anxiety she's had. So let's try and keep her under threshold here. We're gonna counter condition her since she's having somewhat of a fearful reaction, letting her back away at will. She's not like shut down fearful. I think she's just more apprehensive and that would make a lot of sense. Not so into a toy right now, or are you? Let's see, how about this? I wonder if I can get her playing around the water here. That's a good way to measure confidence. See how she's playing right here? She gets a little apprehensive when she sees one of those Waves come up. Here. Yes. So I've been able to put my hand out here. Look at how brave she's getting for this food. And I'm not making her do it. I'm just seeing if she'll go for it. And if she doesn't feel like it, that's okay too. There's no reason for her to get into the water. I just want her being more comfortable with something and show her how to overcome something that she's a little apprehensive of. Confidence building. But you can see she's getting more and more comfortable with it. This isn't like a sandy beach, this is very rocky. So I wanna get her used to different surfaces too. One of the things I just love about small dogs like this, it's a lot easier to ease them into the environment because most of them are gonna feel more secure when you hold them. But then, you know, once you feel they've adapted, you can put them down and we'll see if that does anything for us today. You look at her, <laughs> she's like, what is this place? Completely new type of ground for her to walk on. Some of these rocks are bigger than she is. So think about how a terrain like this might look from her perspective. They look like smaller rocks to us, but her, she's practically rock climbing. 
See how she's having to learn a new way to walk there? And one of the reasons we selected this place was because of the different texture of the ground. And I'm hoping she might gain some confidence when dealing with different terrain, encountering new things, new smells, new materials, all of that. Letting your puppy naturally explore like this, new places on their own terms, can be really great. I mean, look at that. Look how brave she is to just jump up on that rock. And look at her going down there. And it's important to keep your eye out, be aware of your surroundings, make sure there aren't any other dogs that might run up to her. I just want her to kind of explore right now, hence why she's on such a long lead. Here. Yes. That was awesome. Okay. Really key when teaching a recall is to also give them the freedom to resume doing what it is they want to do. Within reason, of course. Yes. She looked back at me, just gonna give her a treat. If she's responsive to it, I'll do it, but I'm not going to insist on training. This is, first and foremost, a socialization outing. What do you think, Biscuits? Look at that boat, isn't that crazy? Look at that big boat. Now, I know that at any moment, we are due for a giant jet to fly over, and I'm curious to see if she continues to act well when the loud sound of the jets pass over when she is in explore mode. Here. Yes. Good girl. Very good. And so I've called her a total of what? Three times out here while we've just been hanging out. That time I was able to call her in the presence of a significant distraction, a giant airplane flying through the sky. Here. Yes. Good girl. Well done. Boy, her recall is almost 100% right now. Come and stay are two things that I really like to teach dogs when I'm first working with them, because it's really important that they understand how to come to you and how to stay. Biscuits, here. She was doing perfect on coming back to me when I was asking for her attention a moment ago, but you could see her clearly just look at these waves as they came in, and she was like, wait a minute, I can't focus on you when that's happening. Yes. Good girl. I said yes because she was walking towards me. I would love to continue to support this wonderful confidence she's exhibiting. This rock is probably millions of years old and it's been waiting for this opportunity to help me teach Biscuits some general body awareness. Seriously, this is actually pretty important. And I wonder if we can get her comfortable staying on this rock with all four of her paws on it. For example, here, yes. I'm only gonna reward her from this point forward when all four paws are up here. Whoa, see, it's tough for her to stay up there. Look at that, there we go. You guessed it, rapid, small Good. treats is what I'm giving her to convey that I yes. want her to stay up here for a longer yes. amount of time. It seems to be working pretty well here. Okay. So I haven't really focused on formally teaching her stay. I have been teaching her to hold her position when I put her into a sit and to hold her position when I put her into a down and then release her. But I also want her to understand the concept of stay in other circumstances as well. Training dogs is about showing them many different contexts in which you would like them to listen. Furthermore, I'm seeing such a strong attention span from her in this new environment, which is very encouraging. Yes, and as long as she holds her four paws on there, Yes, I'm gonna to continue to give her some of her breakfast. So I'm just using her puppy food right here, yes. Kind of an unconventional way of teaching stay. In this case, stay means stay on this little platform, sit. Okay, and then of course, I'll let her know when the stay is over there by releasing her. Got a distraction. How responsive will she be in the presence of dogs? Okay. I'm gonna release her from the stay since there's a dog close by. I'm gonna let her now observe to be fair to her. Here. Yes. So after letting her observe for a few seconds, I'm gonna to try to resume over here. Here, sit. Here. Yes. I'll admit this strategy here is a little borderline. I mean, I do want her to see and observe lots of things without asking too much of her. However, she's so on right now, so it seems like a good opportunity yes. to reinforce her focused attention on me while pretty near another dog. That's something that's really hard for lots of dogs on this planet. Got an airplane here. Yes. Yes. Here, look at me. Yes. You 
may start to see why gentle, singular introductions have value. I mean, we've been letting her see dogs and nature in other lessons, and now we have a massive jet just a few feet above us, with dogs and all while being in a brand new place. You can see how we're starting to stack all of these variables on top of each other, and Biscuits is passing the test at every turn. I mean, you've got to be impressed by that focus. It was hard for me not to look up at that plane passing so closely, and I even got her attention right as the plane was going by in the middle of a training session where I'm asking for a lot of focus. I think we pointed out the myriad of distractions around us. And remember, socialization, probably above all, is about getting your dog to behave in an acceptable manner, ideally calmly and focused in new environments. Not all dogs are like that, as you've seen from other videos we've made. Now, if she was overwhelmed, I would just try to make the environment less stimulating and work up to being in an environment like this. In other words, I would probably go to less crowded or noisy places, like a more remote park, for example. And try to be very purposeful about teaching her. You know, like 20 minutes to an hour a day, a few days a week. You don't need to turn your life upside down to do this type of training. I think that's the biggest misconception. I mean, dogs can only retain so much in a day anyway. People think that I'm training these dogs all day long, but really I just get a two or three of these training sessions in tops. Okay, I'm beginning to think that Biscuits was a gymnast in a former life. This is more than just a cute trick. I'm really impressed by this because she's having to really finely control her body rather than just flopping around like puppies often do. <laughs> I'm going to go with maybe a half spin. Good motor control like that, when they use their feet really finely and delicately, can give you a lot of options. It Slow also it teaches them how Good to stay girl. safer over time. Okay. Serious real world test coming up here. Will she pursue the other dog or will she choose to listen to me? Let's watch for tension on that leash and see how she does. Here, yes. Very good. Good moment right there, real good moment. Being able to call your dog away from another dog is a big deal. She's learning how to use that body. Yes. <laughs> Good girl, there we go, how about that? She's loving exploring the world. She's listening so well. Get a free memory foam bed and awesome toys and treats every month when you sign up for a Bark Box or a Super Chewer Box or even both. Using my special links in the description, subscribe to this channel and click the bell because we still have quite a bit to do with Biscuits before this series is over. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok and get a copy of both of my books and we'll see you in the next episode.